Hey there guys, so last time I ended up taking a look at the Firebat A5P in comparison to the Boss Game M4 Neo, essentially seeing if at the $385 price point, the A5P was really worth it in comparison to a system with a very similar chip, but at a more expensive price. This time around, I want to take a look at something that's a little bit different. Now, the A5P is a system that is rocking a Ryzen 7 7840 5HS. It's paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM, though it is in dual channel, so you at least do not get single channel memory here, but it's also with a 512 gigabyte SSD. I want to compare it to the GMK Tech M7 with the Ryzen 7 6850H. The reason I want to do this comparison is because for a very similar price, you can get this system that has a previous generation chip, but it has 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD, and it has an extra killer feature that might be enough to sway you. But spec for spec here, we are looking at a Ryzen 7 6850 H versus a Ryzen 7 8745HS. The key differences here are, of course, those architecture differences, but also there is the fact that we are looking at a 16 gigabyte system versus a 32 gigabyte system. And of course, there is also the added benefit of getting twice the SSD storage. But a key feature that the GMK Tech M7 has, as well as the fact that it does include an Oculink port. So if you're willing to spend some more money, you can put together a system that is significantly more powerful than both of these systems are in their stock configurations. So let's jump on in and actually see what the performance difference is between these two and see what a potential Oculink setup could be like. So to start things off, we obviously have to take a look at Counter-Strike 2. It is the most popular game on Steam by far. And here it is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings on both systems, though we are not using FSR on either system. And both are giving a great gaming experience, so you will see that the 8745HS does come out on top. It's barely beating out the 6850H. This is pretty much imperceivable differences. You would have to be a absolute pro in this game to really tell a difference between these two. But both of them are giving more than ideal levels of performance. You're going to have a great time playing on here. That said, it does show that the 8745HS doesn't really have a commanding lead here. And I'm sure it has a mixture of TDP limitations as well as that RAM becoming a limiting factor. Because look at the amount of RAM that's being used by the system right now. It really does seem like 32 gigabytes for mini PCs that are gaming orientated, it's starting to become the recommended way to go. Of course, if we move on to Rainbow Six Siege X, this is the game running at the ultra graphic settings and we are using FSR and it's FSR 2.0 at the quality setting. And surprisingly, the 680M system does come out on top. Not by a lot, but it does have a lead and this is after three different runs. So this was a consistent lead that it had. And I can only really attribute this down to the RAM limitation here. At the ultra graphics settings, the game itself does tell you, hey, you should have a decent amount of RAM or at least VRAM. And well, in this case, your RAM is your VRAM. I'm sure if we were running this at the lowest graphics settings, we would see a much bigger lead for the 8745HS. But when you're getting this good a performance at the ultra graphics settings, that's kind of where you're realistically thinking of going. And unfortunately, this is a disappointing showing for the 8745HS. Now, next, I took a look at Marvel Rivals running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and this is below even the low preset. There are a few settings that you can turn down, like the global illumination. But once you turn everything down to the absolute lowest, again, we end up seeing that the 680M comes out on top. The reason that it ends up doing this is because this is a RAM limitation, and we know this because the game directly will even tell you. At the end of the benchmark with the 8745A, chess, it did recommend that I upgrade my RAM. I have never gotten this message with any system that has 32 gigabytes of RAM, not even systems that didn't have enough VRAM allocated by default. So this isn't even an allocation issue. This is literally just there is not enough RAM capacity available. So there are definitely some limitations that come from the very limited RAM here. And next, I took a look at Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord running with the very high graphics settings. These are the maxed out graphics settings, and this time around, the 8745HS does come out on top, though by a pretty much imperceivable amount. I do want to note, though, that the 6850H does have a higher TDP, so it is using more power to achieve essentially the same or slightly worse levels of performance. So there is a trade-off happening here, and there is some showing 
showing of an architectural advantage for the 8745HS. But again, if we look at the RAM utilization amounts, there is a difference here. And I suspect that that is partially to do with the issues that we're seeing here where the 8745HS is not really able to flex its muscles in this title because of that RAM limitation. Now, when it comes to the CPU performance, both of these chips actually end up being surprisingly close to each other, but mostly due to the fact that the A5P has a lower TDP by default. It has a TDP of 45 watts, while the 6850H can go all the way up to 55 watts. And on the CPU in all core workloads, that does make a difference in the sense that these effectively end up performing pretty much the same, even though there is a generation difference between the two. But this does mean that the chip in the A5P is technically working less to get that same level of performance. Since it is using less power, it's running more efficiently. Really though, the multi-core performance doesn't matter all that much for the vast majority of scenarios. What really matters is that single core performance and in the single core performance, the A5P does end up taking the lead here noticeably. It is a generation ahead and there is no TDP limit when it comes to the single core. It's pretty much just going to run more into a clock speed limit more than anything else. And what that means is that we do get the full performance that you would expect out of a Zen 4 processor versus a Zen 3 one. So absolutely no surprises here at all, though I will say that the 6850H is one of the best performing Zen 3 systems that I've ever taken a look at. The only thing that beats it out, besides of course desktop parts, is the 6950H that's in the M7 Pro, but that one is so grossly overpriced and it's just a small margin increase in performance that it doesn't really matter at all. But I did mention the extra feature of the M7 that is that Oculink port. See, for the same price, you're essentially getting a system that does have an expansion slot where you can build up to a actually pretty capable gaming computer. If we just throw on a graphics card on here, and I'm going to be throwing in a RTX 2070 Super, so not a high-end graphics card by any means, and one that you can find in the used market for very cheap. And well, the performance of it looked surprisingly great. In Counter-Strike, I was able to run at the high graphics preset. Again, no FSR is enabled at the high graphics preset. But even at the high graphics preset, we were getting some excellent, excellent levels of performance. And I normally just run this game at the lowest graphics settings. But if I did that with this system, we would essentially end up being CPU bound throughout most of it. And I felt like running it with the high graphics settings was overall just going to be better. And considering that we're still getting insane levels of performance, I think that it is a perfect balance here. And this is kind of the advantage that you get from going with a mini PC that does have an Oculink port. You can always down the line do something like this. To start off with, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to buy a mini PC and a Oculink dock and a GPU all at the same time. That, that just is ridiculous. Just build a desktop at that point. But if you get the mini PC and you use it for a year or two years or three years, and then later down the line, you want to just throw in a GPU to extend the life of it, that is an option here. I mean, just taking a look at Marvel Rivals, the experience here is vastly different to where we were at before, where before we had to be at the lowest possible graphics settings to get this to even be anywhere near a playable gaming experience, and not to mention we were relying on FSR at the performance preset, so it looked pretty awful. Here, I am running still with the low graphics settings, though it is not the lowest, so it does have some of the global illumination settings, though the weakest version of it, but I'm also able to use DLSS since I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card, and I'm using DLSS at the quality preset. I honestly should have just set it to performance, because me personally, DLSS at the performance preset with the transformer model, I just really can't tell the difference between it and quality when I'm playing a game. But the performance boost is pretty dramatic. So I always play with DLSS set to the performance preset. But even at the quality setting, the performance here was spectacular. And that does mean that an upgrade like this opens you up to far more gaming experiences than you would be able to have access to with just the default setting. So I know I praised the A5 p a lot when i first discovered it and you know recommended it to a lot of people and again at 250 dollars you're not going to find another system that performs better than this especially because you are at least getting the 16 gigabytes in dual channel right now ram prices are ridiculous but if you already have your a5p and you manage to get it at a great price you should be very happy because since you have the dual channel yeah you're gonna have some trouble in newer titles and even some older titles if you're trying to go too aggressive with the graphics settings but just turn things down a bit and you're still going to get a great gaming experience and you're at least not
not suffering from having single channel memory, which that would affect every game. The limited amount of RAM really only affects the games that use a ton of RAM. That said though, if I was in the market today, I would personally pick up the M7 and that's just because I do think that the Oculink makes it a great option later down the line. Of course, the A5P you can upgrade later down the line too. You can throw in more RAM, but you will never be able to put an Oculink port in there without doing some more annoying setups where you're going to have to have the lid off and it's really just going to be very finicky when you can just get a system that performs very similar to it. You saw that in some games it was even losing out. Again, it really just comes down to the RAM though. You can play around with settings and really boost the performance, but it does show that there is a disadvantage to those 16 gigabytes of RAM. Of course, it all comes down to personal preference. If you feel like you will never upgrade your system later down the line, then you're going to think about things differently than if you're someone that loves to tinker with their devices, loves to upgrade them and constantly add on stuff. But anyways, let me know what you guys think down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.